All right, guys. Today on the channel, we're going to be talking about how to properly install Ubuntu 22.04 in VirtualBox on a Mac. Now, this tutorial is going to work basically the same for a Windows PC as well. So if you're on Windows, you can watch this video and I promise you'll still be all right. Okay, so we're going to need a couple of things here first. And the good news here is this is all going to be free. Don't we all like free things, right? So first thing we're going to need is VirtualBox. So if you've never heard of VirtualBox before, it is a free virtual machine software that you can download on a Windows computer, a Mac computer, a Linux, Solaris, all those different things. And I'll put a link in the description down below. But when you are downloading it here, you want to click on the one that is your actual computer. So I'm on a Mac. So I'll click on the OS 10 host. If you're on a PC, then you'll click on Windows. So you're gonna click on that and it's going to start downloading that file for you. Then you open it up and you just install it like you would any other Mac application. Once that gets done, or you can do this while you're waiting for that to get done, we want to download a copy of Ubuntu Desktop. So this is the software we're gonna be uh, running here on Virtual Machine. The operating system of choice so 22.04.1 is the latest version here long-term support uh, model so I'll put a link down below as well but you basically just click download and it's gonna download an ISO file for you which is what we'll use in VirtualBox to set up our Linux okay so here is VirtualBox now yours is gonna look a little bit different than mine I already use VirtualBox, as you can see, I already have Windows 11 and Windows 8.1. If you're curious on how to install Windows on VirtualBox, well, you can check out my channel for some of those tutorials. Windows 11 is working great here on VirtualBox, but today we're going to be doing Ubuntu. So you're just going to be all blank and stuff. Just ignore the way mine looks. You're going to click on this new button right here. When you click on new, you're gonna to need to name the operating system. So the name here is what is actually gonna appear over here on the left-hand side, as you can see where I have Windows 11 8.1. So it will appear over here. You wanna make it obviously a recognizable name. For me, I just call it whatever it is. So 22.04.1 makes it real simple and easy. Now, if you have multiple operating systems, you might want to customize the name a little bit more. This right here is where your disk image is going to be saved, your VirtualBox, your VDI file. So this is where all your virtual machine files are going to be saved. They'll be stored on your host machine. By default, it puts them in your library folder, which I think is a pretty good place for it. Now, depending on whether or not you properly named your virtual machine, it may or may not know what it is already. So as you can see, it actually does. It says Linux and Ubuntu 64-bit. So that's what you need right there. We'll go ahead and hit continue right there. Now, this is your memory size, your RAM memory. So this is kind of important. It can be changed later. Ubuntu recommends a minimum of four gigs of RAM. However, you probably can get by with about maybe two maybe three, uh, but it does recommend four. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set it to roughly four gigs of RAM, which is 40, 48 megabytes. Now, this is gonna be borrowing RAM from your host machine whenever you're using your virtual machine. So this computer here I'm using is a MacBook Air and it has 16 gigs of RAM. You can see that as indicated right here. Well, as long as you're in this green area, you're good. You don't typically want to go into this orange or anything because then the rest of your computer will be unusable. Most virtual machines I recommend between two and four gigs unless it explicitly states otherwise like Windows 11 you have to have four gigs of RAM. Ubuntu you don't necessarily have to but we're gonna do it just for the sake of this video. And that can be adjusted at any time, okay? So you can go back into your settings, which I'll show you in a minute, and you can adjust that, totally fine. This, however, cannot be adjusted. So your hard disk, your hard disk, whenever you set the size of it, you cannot change it. So you need to make sure you get this right from the beginning, 
or you'll have to delete your whole virtual machine and that's not going to be fun. You can see that we want it to say create a virtual hard disk. Now we hit create, we want a virtual box disk image, that's what I was referencing earlier, and we want it dynamically allocated. Fixed size, it can make your machine run a little bit faster, but what's going to happen is it's going to immediately take all that storage space from your virtual machine, or excuse me, from your host machine for your virtual machine. And if you're kind of a little iffy on your storage, you don't want to do that. But dynamically allocated is a better option in my opinion. So I always pick that. Now here we go. This is where we can choose the size. Ubuntu needs at least 25 gigs of storage. So I don't know why this is saying 10. I'm probably going to do about 64. Uh, that should be good enough for me. This is also just a test. I have quite a bit of storage on this computer. So both of my Windows machines are about 128 gigs. That's like the minimum for a computer nowadays. So you might want to just go on the extra side or extra, you know, larger side of things just to be on the safe side. But remember, you can't change this. So be sure you set it to a good amount. Think about what you're going to be using your machine for. I think 64 gigs will be just fine on Ubuntu. Now we can hit create. And there we go, we got our machine. It is popped up here in the VirtualBox Manager. Now we need to go into our settings, which is right here, and just kind of check on a few things. So really, uh, the only thing you want to change is we don't need a floppy disk. That's <laughs> just personal preference. You don't have to uncheck it if you just love your floppy disk. Processor, you may want to consider bumping up your processor to two it would just make things run a little smoother. Most time you get by with one, uh, but I don't know, it, it's hit or miss. You know, you can always change this stuff. Like I said, the only thing you can't change is that hard disk space. So no more than two CPUs need to be used. We're gonna leave it at one uh, for now. If we need to, we can change it later. Under the display, however, you wanna drag your slider on your video memory all the way to the right. Whatever your number is, it's usually about 128 megabytes for me. Whatever that is, drag it all the way to the right. And if you want to enable 3D acceleration, it can make things a little bit smoother as well, depending on if your hardware can support it, of course. Okay, so I think everything's good here. Um, yeah, I don't think anything else needs to be changed at the moment. Like I said, we can go fix that later if we need to. Now we want to hit start. This is the fun part. We're going to start up our virtual machine that we just created. It's going to ask us for whatever a virtual optical disk file is. But hey, guess what? That's what we downloaded a few minutes ago, our Ubuntu disk image. So you're going to click on this folder icon. You're going to click on the add icon. And you're going to just navigate on over to wherever you save that at. It's probably still in your downloads folder. I organize all my ISOs and a different format and folder stuff so just go find it hit open and then we're gonna hit choose and then we're gonna hit start now since I'm on a secondary monitor it's gonna jack this up okay maybe not okay usually what happens is it throws it up to my other display okay so we're gonna get this screen right here it says try or install Ubuntu you're gonna just hit enter on that we want to install Ubuntu not try it so it's going to take a second here and you can see the loading screen here for the installation. Once that uh, gets all loaded up here, you're going to be greeted with this screen. So you can either try or install it. We obviously want to install it. It's literally free. I don't know why anybody would try it. Let's just hit install. It's going to ask you to select your keyboard layout. It should probably already be uh, how you want it. So we can go ahead and just hit continue on that. Now it's going to ask you about updates here. So you could do a normal installation, which includes everything, you know, all their extra stuff, office and all that. Or you can do a minimal installation. Just for the sake of this video, I'm going to do a minimal one. And then it says under other options, you can download updates while installing Ubuntu. I usually uncheck that because it makes it a quicker installation. And then you definitely don't want to install any third party uh, graphics software or anything like that because we'll do that later with the guest editions. So once you hit that you can hit continue 
And now it's going to ask us here how we want to install it. Now, don't freak out when you see it says our race disk and install Ubuntu. Don't panic. Don't panic. Okay, so this is talking about that virtual hard drive we just created. Don't worry about it. So just leave that erase disk and install Ubuntu and then just hit install now. It's going to confirm that you won't do that. Again, it's totally fine. Don't worry about it. Just hit continue. And now it's going to ask you for your time zone. It probably already knows. Just select that and hit continue again. Now it's going to ask you a few details about yourself just to obviously create your computer profile. So you can just type in your name, set up your computer's name, pick a username, and then pick a password. Obviously you want a much stronger password than that. I'm going to hit login automatically to make life easier. And uh, we're going to hit continue. And finally, we're at the part where it actually is going to install Ubuntu. So this is going to take a little while. It might restart. But we should arrive on the desktop whenever this gets completed. So let's go ahead and wait for this real quick. Desktop, and now it's gonna ask us a few more questions to kind of set things up. So you can obviously connect your online accounts if you would like. You can set up live patch, which I don't think I'm gonna do any of that. You can choose whether or not to send system info to Ubuntu. You can turn on your location services. So, you know, just go through this stuff and you can then see some software you can download. But yeah, that should be it. You hit done. And here we are. We're on the desktop. So you can see the new wallpaper for 22, which looks like a jellyfish, I would assume. Okay, so there's one more thing we need to do here. Actually, there's two more things we need to do. So we need to install the VirtualBox Guest Editions. But before we can do that, we need to head into our terminal window. And we're going to need to install uh, the build essentials before we can actually do the VirtualBox guest editions. Sometimes it works without doing this step, but most of the time it doesn't for me at least. So I just go ahead and tell people to go ahead and install these uh, right away. So this is a sudo command. So you're going to do sudo apt and okay, yeah, this comes up too. Um, since we didn't install these updates during the actual installation uh, you're gonna see this here so you just want to go ahead and, and install those but uh, while that's doing its thing we can finish our command here so sudo apt then you type in install build dash essentials and it's dkms and you're gonna type in your password that you use to sign on with and it will install these build essentials for you so this is going to guarantee your guest editions to work properly uh, once they get installed so this is going to go through uh, this process here and we'll go ahead and wait for it to get done little mistake that i made uh it's essential not essentials so i had to retype it in there but now it is completed. You can see it is all installed right there. And that's all we need to do with those build essentials. And now what we can do is up here in our menu bar, we can click on devices. We can click on insert guest editions CD image. And what this is going to do is insert the uh, VirtualBox guest edition. So what this is going to do is basically put in all the virtual hardware drivers that we're going to need to make everything work properly. It's gonna make your experience better. It's also gonna fix things like this screen resolution uh, issue we're having here. The way I thought you installed guest editions apparently doesn't work anymore. So this is a little bit different route uh, that you can do here to install them. So what you wanna do is once you insert that guest edition CD image, you right click in the window after you click on the disk, you hit open in terminal. Now when you hit open in terminal, it'll say uh, something like this. It'll say media, your name, VBox guest editions. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna type in this command, sudo dot slash VBox Linux editions dot run. You'll hit enter and then you'll type in your password 
and that's how you install the guest edition so I'm not really sure actually if you even have to do the build essentials that I showed you earlier but it doesn't hurt to do them so but once these guest editions uh, get installed here uh, we'll be able to do things like change our screen resolution and different stuff like that so let's go ahead and give this a moment to complete okay so there we go so it's done and now what it wants us to do is actually uh, do a restart so let's go ahead and just click on our power and we'll restart this and once we load back up here we should be able to change our screen resolution so let's see if it works all right so we've arrived back here on the desktop and if we resize our window you will notice that it resizes to match so that means also that we can go into full screen mode and it will scale to match your display so that's one main reason why you want to install those guest additions it just makes things a lot better for you but yeah uh, last thing you can do here is just simply eject the uh, VBox editions right here so don't need those anymore uh, since you have them installed. It is important to note though that whenever you update VirtualBox you'll have to also update the guest editions in each of your virtual machines. But anyways that is all I got for you guys today. I hope this tutorial worked smoothly for you. If it did not however please leave a comment down below and I will try to get back with you as quickly as I possibly can. Links will be in the description for the downloads needed for this. And like I said, if you have any problems, leave them down below and I'll try to answer you. Thanks for watching, guys. There's plenty more VirtualBox tutorials on the channel. Hope this helped you out. Be sure to like the video and click that subscribe button for more content like this. I really do appreciate your guys' support. Anyways, that's all we got today. I'll catch you all in the next tutorial.